गुड मॉर्निंग डियर फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर रश्मि जोशी सावलकर असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जूलॉजी श्री आर एल टी कॉलेज ऑफ साइंस अकोला डियर फ्रेंड्स वी हैव स्टडीड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर द टाइप्स ऑफ मसल्स एंड स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शंस ऑफ मसल्स नाउ टूडे वी विल स्टडी द मसल फिजियोलॉजी और the neuromuscular junction so let's start about the neuromuscular junction today we will see about the definition of neuromuscular junction how the junction formed the structure we will study here neuromuscular transmission how the transmission of impulse is transmitted we will study and see here now friends first of all what is how we will define the neuromuscular junction so junction between junction between the terminal branch of nerve fiber and muscle fiber see junction between the terminal branch of nerve fiber and muscle fiber this is the <coughs> motor see here spinal nerve this is the spinal nerve this is the spinal cord and these spinal nerves and here are the motor neuron motor neuron a and motor neuron b these motor neurons get connected or inserted into the muscle layer and this junction see here the box here highlighted part here that the neuron motor neuron enters or get inserted into the muscular layer and this junction of motor neuron and muscular cell muscular layer is called as neuromuscular junction and this is the place where the transmission of impulse took place that we will study in this lecture today see friends the structure again here this yellow structured part is the motor neuron it is the motor neuron in which mitochondria are seen then calcium ions are seen this calcium gate channel is present and the junction fold of sarcolemma and this is the muscle layer and this blue color structure around the neuron motor neuron is the muscle layer or sarcoplasm or muscle fiber now see at in this structure what we have seen the axon terminal the terminal branch of nerve fiber axon terminal is the terminal branch of nerve fiber motor end plate bulb like expansion of axon terminal see in the previous structure or see in the previous structure we will see this is the terminal end of motor neuron which is the bulb like structure which gets inserted into the muscle layer which gets inserted into the muscle layer this is called as the motor end plate bulb like expansion of axon terminal okay now synaptic through or gutter it is the depression of the muscle fiber due to the invagination of motor end plate motor end plate let just i have explained you that the bulb like structure or end of the motor neuron which invaginates into the muscle layer is called as the synaptic synaptic through or gutter the next part is subneural cleft numerous folds of post synaptic membrane are called as subneural clefts pre synaptic membrane the membrane of nerve ending is called as pre synaptic membrane then the next part is post synaptic membrane the membrane of muscle fiber is called as post synaptic membrane now these two membrane presynaptic and postsynaptic 
forms the synaptic cleft and synaptic cleft is the space between post and presynaptic membranes then the next part is basal lamina thin spongy layer of reticular matrix in synaptic cleft is called as basal lamina now see here the structure first it is the neuromuscular transmission the motor neuron showing the neuromuscular transmission so transfer of information from motor nerve ending to the muscle fiber through neuromuscular junction to initiate muscle contraction neuromuscular transmission is a process in which motor nerve ending to the muscle fiber through neuromuscular junction to initiate muscle contraction see the diagram beside it is presynaptic nerve canal it is presynaptic nerve canal see here it is synaptic cleft more time of cations to pass through channel and allo allosteric modulations then nicotinic against membrane now acetylcholine released into synaptic cleft this will this we will study in the next slide very in brief now in neuromuscular junction or neuromuscular transmission series of events took place or take place number 1 release of acetylcholine it is an enzyme it is an element or chemical which is released at at first and then the neuromuscular transmission starts it is the initiation element that is released which is acetylcholine then action of acetylcholine after releasing the acetylcholine what action took place now the third one is development of end plate potential now acetylcholine release it get activated and the development of end plate potential take place development of miniature end plate potential then destruction of acetylcholine these all five steps togetherly functions and the neuromuscular transmission took place now one by one we will study the first one is release of acetylcholine the first step is release of acetylcholine now see dear friends this is the motor neuron end which is a bulb like structure inside the motor neuron end we you all see here that the gate channels these purple colors gate channels are called as voltage gated calcium channels these are calcium channels and first number 1 action potential reaches terminal at the end of motor neuron the action which is released from the brain or spinal cord get at the get entered at the end of motor neuron after getting uh, potential reaches at the terminal end the voltage gated calcium channels open after opening of calcium gated channels the synaptic vesicles the synaptic vesicles comes and settle down at the end of the motor neuron these synaptic vesicles get settled down at the last or terminal end of the motor neurons now after settling of these synaptic vesicles the calcium gated channels get opened and calcium enters into inside the terminal end after entering calcium ions inside the terminal end the vesicles get fused here and acetylcholine present inside the vesicles get poured outside the terminal end see here the acetylcholine is released here when it gets released when the calcium gate channels got open and the calcium is entered into the end part of the motor neuron 
these calcium ions activate the seminal vesicles to fuse with the membrane of motor terminal end of motor neuron the, it gets fused with the membrane and the vesicles pours its secretion or acetylcholine outside the terminal end of motor neuron now it pours the acetylcholine at the synaptic cleft it is the synaptic cleft a space between terminal end of motor neuron and the uh, muscle layer this synaptic cleft shows the presence of acetylcholine okay now this acetylcholine neurotransmitter is released and diffuses into the cleft this acetylcholine or neurotransmitter it is called as neurotransmitter which is released and diffused diffuses into the cleft here after that this neurotransmitter binds to post synaptic receptors now on the muscle layer some receptors are present which are waiting for to join with the uh, neurotransmitter so after diffusion of neurotransmitter this neurotransmitter travels and get attached or get bind at the post synaptic receptors here now this post synaptic receptor neurotransmitter removed from synaptic cleft now after they get entered into the muscle layer they get attached or binds with the post synaptic receptors this is the first step how the release of acetylcholine took place second one and the second step is action of acetylcholine action of acetylcholine see here every step is given here number 1 nerve impulse the nerve impulse from brain or spinal cord enters at the end of the neuro motor neuron this impulse when comes at the terminal end the calcium gate channels get opened after opening of calcium gate channels the calcium ions enters into the motor neurons see every calcium channel get open and calcium ions are entered now entering into the into the bulb like structure of motor neuron bulb like end of motor neuron now after entering of calcium in in inside the motor neuron these synaptic vesicles which contains the acetylcholine neurotransmitter get activated these activated synaptic vesicles fuses with the end part or terminal end of the uh, motor neurons and now they fuses with the membrane and pour their neurotransmitter secretion outside the motor neuron now this acetylcholine neurotransmitter get diffuses in the synaptic cleft synaptic cleft is the place in between the end part or terminal part of motor neuron and the muscle layer so the diffused acetylcholine at the synaptic cleft now activates the activates the ligand gated channels which are present on the muscle layer now after attachment of acetylcholine on this ligand gated channel they get open see here the brown color structures the acetylcholine binds here and after binding they get activated and the gate channel got open get open now after opening the gate channel this green color structure which is sodium ion these sodium ions which are present in the muscle layer get entered inside get entered inside after opening the gate channel the sodium ions get entry inside the muscle layer now this is post synaptic potential that the entry of sodium ions get here and now the ligand gated channel opens 
and that nerve impulse which came from the brain or spinal cord now entered with the help of calcium ion neurotransmitter acetylcholine this neurotransmitter acetylcholine binds with the binds at the um, receptors and the gate channel opens after opening of the gate channel the sodium ion get entered into the muscles and through the sodium ions the post synaptic potential get in entered into the nerve impulse and the nerve impulse entered into the muscle and due to this nerve impulse now the muscle starts contraction and relaxation this was the second step of action of acetylcholine now development of end plate potential the third step is development of end plate potential now see nerve impulse at the terminal end then the vesicles here synaptic vesicles containing acetylcholine neurotransmitter this neurotransmitter after Uh, the calcium ion entered get activated and the neurotransmitter is poured in and poured and diffused into the synaptic cleft at the synaptic at the diffusion the these uh, acetylcholine get binds at the receptors of sodium potassium gate channels and this activation of acetylcholine the gate channels got open and after opening of this gate channel the sodium ions get entered and potassium ions get outside and this will help in the impulse to enter into the muscles and after getting this impulse these sodium potassium ions starts the contraction and uh, relaxation of muscles See, number one, local depolarization generation of the end plate potential on the sarcolemma. The sodium ion getting inside, the potassium ion getting outside. This type of process starts, and it is called as local depolarization. The second step is generation and propagation of the action potential. Now, opening of sodium channel. All sodium ions entered. closed potassium channel this functions took place and that is known as development of end plate potential the next or the fourth step is development of miniature end plate potential see the diagram here see the diagram again the neuromuscular junction is shown here it is the motor neuron these are the synaptical vesicles containing neurotransmitter acetylcholine these are calcium channels through which the voltage gated calcium channel through which the calcium enters inside the motor neuron after entering of calcium the synaptic vesicles get activated and get fused to the terminal end of motor neuron and this due to this activation the acetylcholine is released in the synaptic cleft and this diffused acetylcholine binds at the receptors of gate channels ligand gated ion channels and the channels get open after opening now see the next step after opening of ligand gated channels the sodium ion and potassium ion entry and exit took place then it is the membrane it is the membrane plasma membrane of muscle fibers it is neurotransmitter this green color is acetylcholine neurotransmitter after binding this receptor the gate channel opens and after opening the sodium potassium ion entry and exit took place ligand gated ion channels now when this neurotransmitter or acetylcholine separates from this receptor channel receptor part the gate channel get again closed after closing the gate channel the neuro the ion sodium and potassium that released outside and the gate channel uh, again get closed and now this acetylcholine which 
functions as the activation or impulse transmission took place due to this acetylcholine now it get deactivated and hence like this the cycle starts for contraction and relaxation of neurons impulses the last step is the destruction of acetylcholine when the acetylcholine uh, separates from the receptor uh, ion, ion channel gated ion channel it gets destructed or destruction took place in which choline is separated and acetate is separated in two parts today we have studied the neuromuscular junction and how the impulse or transmission took place through this neuromuscular junctions different steps we we, we have studied here and i think you all now nicely understood the topic and if any query please discuss with me in the next lecture we will meet on google meet soon thank you for lending me the ear thank you